Very respectable speeds right here. All right, looks like we got another Netgear Nighthawk router in the house because who doesn't love the internet, am I right? So today we're looking at a Wi-Fi 5 AC1900 smart Wi-Fi router from Netgear and it's rated for gaming and streaming and 100% faster for mobile devices. I guess so, I mean Wi-Fi 5 versus 4, it's kind of a big leap and then there's 6 too, but this is 5 so we're staying in the past a little bit. This particular router is rated to cover up to 1800 square feet and 30 devices. So 30 devices doesn't sound like all that many, although in my experience, 30 devices means 30 demanding devices. So if you have a bunch of smart plugs around your house, those will be just fine. So just like all the recent Netgear routers, they support the Nighthawk app, which allows you to set up the router in about five minutes just by plugging it into your modem, going through the app on your phone, and being ready to go just like that. Smooth sailing. It supports Netgear Armor cybersecurity to keep you safe online, although that does require a monthly subscription fee. We have Circle Smart Parental Controls to keep the young ones protected online. It has a USB 2.0 port so you can actually plug in a printer or a hard drive so you can share it on your network. And it even allows you to access your network from anywhere around the world through the internet in a safe manner so you can control things and change settings and do all that different stuff. Just don't expect to be able to use the internet on your Wi-Fi network in China when your router's in the United States because that's impossible. Right? And of course it supports all the other features such as guest networks and everything else other routers support. Now as far as the packaging goes, it looks very nice and it does let us know. It has a 1 GHz dual core processor for extreme speed and range. Although to be fair, in my experience with Netgear routers, it never reaches the range that they claim, so hopefully this one does. Alright, very simple. Inside the box, a quick start guide. Setup is as easy as one, two, three. Simple. An ethernet cable and a power adapter. So as you can see, this is pretty much as easy as it gets when it comes to routers. Just hopefully it functions as easily as possible and works as good as possible. Hey, this is a router, all right. We got three antennas to get of us maximum range, hopefully. Oh yeah, when you're peeling this off, don't forget your default network name and password is right here on the sticker. Now over on the front, we have a bunch of LEDs, including a power LED, an internet LED, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, a USB 3.0 LED, a USB 2.0 LED, one, two, three, and four ethernet ports, along with a Wi-Fi on and off button with an LED light underneath, and a WPS button with an LED light underneath. I'm not really sure why there would be a Wi-Fi on and off button on the router itself, because if somebody wants to mess with you, they'll come press it and you'll be like, why isn't my internet working? But it's here. That is honestly a really dumb design. I really can't think of a purpose for that, to be honest. Then over on the back, we have a reset button, four gigabit ethernet ports, a WAN port to plug in your cable modem, USB 2.0 port, a manual power on and off button, as well as the power adapter port. And then over here on the front's actually pretty cool because we have a USB 3.0 port, so you can also plug in things. Down on the bottom, we do have four rubberized feet, which are decently rubberized, not too bad. And really that's it. Very simple design, very Netgear design, and hopefully it functions properly. So now as you can see, the router disappeared as if by magic because I have it set up in the internet room connected to the modem and connected to power so we can get this thing set up properly. So you're gonna first need to go into your app store and download the Netgear Nighthawk Wi-Fi app. Or if you want, you can use the web interface if you don't wanna do it the easy way. Or maybe this is harder for you. It's up to you, but we're gonna try to do it the easy way. We're gonna get started. And now we're gonna choose what we're setting up. We're gonna choose Wi-Fi router. And now we're gonna point our camera at the QR code or you can connect manually, but we're gonna try to do it as easily as possible. So remember I said that little film that was on it had a QR code and the internet information. We're gonna scan that. Invalid QR code. Great, it already broke. <laughs> I guess we're doing it the hard way. Okay, so we're gonna connect manually. And now we have to go to our Wi-Fi settings. We're gonna look for Netgear 69 or whatever it's your network happens to be. We're gonna type in our password, whatever your password happens to be. We're gonna join. And we're connected. Now we can go back to the Nighthawk app, try again. And now we're connecting to the router. So we have to log in. It says the default password is password. Okay, so that's always good. Sign in. And it was easy, okay. Routers detected, cables connected, we don't need this film anymore. 
internet connected personalize your settings okay so the QR code didn't work for whatever reason but once you got connected everything was smooth sailing so far tap on next now we're gonna create our Wi-Fi network I'm gonna just leave it as is to make things as easy as possible but of course when you're setting up a new Wi-Fi network you're always gonna want to use the same credentials both name and password as your previous network so that way all your devices will automatically connect because especially if you have a bunch of smart devices you do not want to go through all of them and reset them up with the new network it's a nightmare don't do it unless you really want a different name so we're gonna tap on next now we can set up our admin login can I just keep it as password non default value required it won't let me can I do password one <laughs> it actually lets me do password one that's what we're doing Security questions, of course, you know, why not? And now we're personalizing the settings, checking for new firmware. Oh, we're actually up to date. I spoke too soon. <laughs> so tap on OK, up and running. We're now configured and just like that, we're ready to go. Very nice, very easy. Just the QR code didn't work. That's a little bit upsetting because it was supposed to be super simple like Pi. I like Pi. All right, so we have Netgear Pro support. You can extend your one year product warranty and 90 day support and you have to pay for that. <laughs> Not today, maybe later. Installing Netgear Armor, which you also have to pay for. I don't want it, can you just hurry up? All right, and now we're in, so, no we're not. Okay, so we have Circle, Parental Control, you can enable this and you can view browsing history of all the kids, you can filter the adult content, limit app access, and even pause the internet, set time limits and all that stuff so you can control their online usage. So we're gonna say, not interested, I'm not gonna be using that. But now, it looks like we have 30 days, or maybe 29, I'm not sure, of protection from Netgear Armor, which is cool, but then you have to pay for it, whatever. We have our device manager, so you can actually see all the devices connected to the network. Right now it says we have two for some reason, even though it's just this phone, but, you know, pretty cool. So I'm going to make sure to connect to the 5G network to get the fastest speeds, although it doesn't go as far and penetrate walls as well. We're connected to the 5G network, and now we have two bars, so it is a little less, but... I'm still impressed. So now that we're in here, we're good to go. So the Nighthawk app, although it is very basic for you know the basic user, it's also very cool because it's a very nicely designed app and you can do some things like check the internet speed of the actual internet to the router. So let's see how fast the internet's coming from the modem directly to the router. Okay, that's more like it. I was like, why is it stuck at one? Although it's still kind of low. <laughs> what? There we go. Come on, it's only getting like half. I'm supposed to be getting 35 up. Although the ping's really good. I'm supposed to be getting a thousand down. <laughs> I'm not sure why it's going so slow. My internet's super fast. That's really slow. I'm supposed to get a thousand down and 35 up and yeah, I'm getting that. Eh, I guess it's good enough. So that's one of my favorite features so you can make sure your internet's going as fast as it's supposed to go. We have parental controls, Wi-Fi settings so you can adjust your network, including if you want to turn on Smart Connect so it automatically chooses which devices connect to which networks. Although in my experience, my phone always connected to 2.4 gigahertz and I didn't like that, so I always turn that off. You can choose guest Wi-Fi so you can have guest networks on and off. Very cool. You can have your traffic meter turned on and off so you can see how much data is being used on your network. Let me turn that on. I always like having that. This is especially useful if you have a limited data plan for some reason, which sucks. If you do, get rid of it. Unlimited is way better. And as you can see, we have a chart. You can see the total as well as the average for download and upload. And then we also have support if you need to get support because something's not working right. And the cool thing about this app, like I said, you can actually set this up so you can use it even when you're away from your network so you can control things like parental controls and check your internet connectivity. Pretty cool. As far as standing in the room with the router and doing a speed test, I'm pulling a very nice nine millisecond ping and there we go. We passed 400 and we're rising. How high are we gonna go? 440, 450, very respectable speeds right here. Looks like we pulled 466 megabits per second down out of a thousand and the upload speed, it's climbing. Remember this is out of 35 megabits per second up. We're climbing, 32, 33. Are we gonna max out? 34 megabits per second up. So I'm not sure why, I guess the Nighthawk app is a little glitched out or something because it said the direct connection speed of the router to the modem was what, like 100 megabits per second? So that is definitely weird and strange because last time I used it, it was giving me a very high result. But the good news is the actual speed from the router is very good. Granted, it's not maxed out at 1,000, but 500 is nothing to laugh at. So remember, this is supposed to cover about 1,800 square feet. I'm not that far, although to be fair, the router is completely on the other side of the world right now, but we are getting two bars. So let's see how fast the internet actually is coming way over here because sometimes the signal doesn't actually make it over here. So right now it looks like it is. So let's see how fast it actually goes. Okay, 11 millisecond ping, and I mean, you know, not bad. 
it's better than nothing. I mean, it's not too bad for having to penetrate a bunch of walls to get to me and on only two out of three bars of service. So definitely usable, definitely fast enough for almost anything. So overall, it looks like this router is actually coming true with its claims. The range is very good because it's hitting me with two out of three bars and I am probably at least a thousand square feet away from the router, going through all these walls and obstacles, so that's very good. Because I did try a Netgear Wi-Fi 6 router that couldn't make it through that door. If I went out the door, I had service, came through the door, completely lost it. So this one actually reaching me with two out of three bars and giving me almost 100 megabits per second down, I'm pretty satisfied with, to be honest. Although it's not great, it's definitely within the range when it comes to specs. So if you're looking at a Wi-Fi 5 router with some good range for a mid-sized home, this is definitely a good option here because the app is great even though the speed test looks like it's broken, the speeds are good even when you're far away and going through obstacles and walls, and especially if you have full service, you're pulling up some really good digits. I mean, even the setup went through almost flawlessly other than the QR code not working, but once you just typed in the network manually, it was good to go. Smooth selling from start to finish. So let me know if you're a fan of Netgear or maybe you're a fan of some other routers and let me know what your favorite one is. Maybe you're upgrading to Wi-Fi 6. Let me know if you have Wi-Fi 6 and you're like, why would I want to go to Wi-Fi 5? I don't know why. You might want to. Maybe not. Probably not. I wouldn't. Unless you have bad range like that Netgear Wi-Fi 6 that I tried. But overall, it's doing a good job being a router for Wi-Fi 5. Nothing to complain about.